Hi students, welcome to another week of cultural geography. And this week, actually for the next few weeks, we are going to be talking about issues, a variety of issues that contribute to self-identity and social identity. So in the previous week, we looked at what culture was to begin with, its rituals and customs and traditions and all sorts of things, knowledge, skills, material, non-material culture, language, symbols, all of those things that we learned about in previous week about culture um, are going to contribute to our ideas about self-identity and social identity. So um, in geography, we have to have an understanding of the diversity that exists in populations. Some populations are not so diverse, such as Japan is an example. They have what we call a relatively homogenous society. Therefore, people are mostly the same religion, speak mostly the same um, uh, language, like mostly the same foods, these kinds of things. Uh, there's some diversity in Japan, but compared to the United States, um, that is extremely uh, diverse in its population with lots of ethnic groups, lots of racial categories, um, lots of uh, ability to self-identify in your gender, gender category. I say ability to do that because in comparison with the third world or underdeveloped countries that we have already researched in um, class together, uh, there are, you know, some of these are luxury issues uh, in that mental scape, in the mental scape of those who endure uh, life in the impoverished situations of the underdeveloped or undeveloped nations or third world nations. So some of these topics, in other words, are going to fall under that category that I've mentioned so often, They're going to fall under the category of first world problems, right? Uh, first world because we have infrastructure in place, we have a sound economy, we have plenty, we have, uh, even though we definitely have our fair share of poverty in our society here in the United States, um, that poverty is supplemented so much with uh, resources from other, um, other sources uh, than simply our own personal incomes, that we have the luxury, so to speak, to um, talk about social identity, self-identity, and how it can differentiate us in uh, ways that make us stand out and be proud, um, or yes, make us stand out um, to be discriminated against in some cases. Although we, when, especially when we get to the ethnic minority and religion uh, conversation in another couple of weeks, when we get to the religion chapter, um, we will look at in some places that don't have um, the rule of law like we have in the United States, there's a lot of oppression, discrimination, or even genocide based on a social identity or a self-identity um, in other places of the world. So there's so many issues that uh, we can talk about regarding self-identity and social identity, but in this brief introductory video for this week, let's just look at the general idea of what these things are. So self-identity, of course, is talking about the individual as opposed to social identity, which would be a grouping of individuals who have some sort of connection or um, perception that they belong together as a group and are different from other groups based on some sort of feature or collection of features about their behavior or their looks or their background or their heritage, any of those kinds of concepts. But let's start with self-identity. So self, like we said, is the individual. And we can define this loosely as the way, the collection of all of the perceptions that an individual has about themselves as a person. Am I smart? Am I not so smart? Am I tall? Am I short? Am I skinny? Am, am I tubby? Whatever those adjectives are that you can fill in the blank, those would be a part of your individual self-identity. And it can change the way we behave and interact in larger groups with people who we see as others. In other words, do they seem to have the same sort of features that we identify in ourselves, therefore we have commonality with them, or do they seem to have differences or opposite points um, of description about those individuals compared to us as individuals? So self-identity is about us 
but it's always controlled by the larger social identity. Because think of social identity, like we said, as a group of many individuals that have some sort of perceived connectivity based on some sort of commonality that they share among them. Religion is not one of the things that I have on my, my list up here, but religion is one very common um, way to have a social identification for an entire group. We'll get to religion later on two, three weeks from now. I think, I think two weeks from now. Um, but in this particular introductory section of the social identity unit, we're going to be looking at the differences in some of the identity markers, social identity markers, like race, like ethnicity, like your sex or sexuality, and gender, which are two different things. We cannot use those things interchangeably. And also what normativity is considered to be in a society versus otherness. So normativity, of course, is the expected norm or the images or identification markers that are controlled by the dominant group in a society. So not all societies are as diverse as the USA. Many societies have a much more homogenous makeup of the population, but in societies that are very, very diverse, there tends to be a dominant group who either rises to the top to control things or from the beginning controls, so to speak, not only government and laws, but also um, the perceptions of what is normal and what is outside the norm. So you can think of otherness as outside the norm. So in geography, when we look at this, we are going to examine not only what these things are just from a definition kind of standpoint, but then how does this play out in daily life? And when we are talking about um, living in particular places like urban areas that we've studied or suburban areas or inner city versus country, these kinds of places can make up part of our social identity. There are certain places, like for instance, Northwest Arkansas, Harrison, Arkansas, you begin to drive in some of the, um, some of the back highways up there and you will begin to see billboards that say uh, things like, I'm proud of my race and if I'm proud of my race, does that make me racist? Um, these and all around this uh, Boone County, I believe is the county that it's in all around this county. If you drive around and make some observations of some of the signs that are in people's yards or plastered on the side of a church or a billboard, like I said, on the side of the highway, you can begin to get a very clear concept of what the social identity is for at least enough of the population there um, to approve of and not take down these publicly displayed signs about racial purity, racial um, identity, and uh, racial pride. Uh, so these kinds of things are important in other words. And so we can start to look at the landscape around us and identify, literally identify places on maps like the town and the county that um, I've just mentioned, or even just within a city. We'll look at like Chicago or Milwaukee or Baltimore. There's a lot of different city um, plots and maps that we can look at that have different ethnic identities within that, or even different areas where uh, people of one sexuality or another tend to flock and and make their home and make their residence. You maybe have heard of Little Italy or Chinatown in New York City. Well, these are ethnic markers of geographic areas within a larger city. Um, the, a city so big, it has different boroughs in it just to keep them straight from the Bronx to Manhattan to um, Queens, all of these different um, places. Stanton Island, you keep on going, right? So. Um, Social identity is a major marker for how we fit in or don't fit in with the group around us. Are we comfortable or not comfortable with um, the people around us? And that can be because our self identity fits in to the overall social identity of the group or we're identifying against the others because our self identity based on any number of these things or things like language patterns, religious patterns, other issues that we'll talk about in future weeks, um, these fit us or they don't fit us. They're part of our social identity or they're not part of our social identity. 
So it's a very interesting and complicated um, couple of chapters that we're going to, three or four chapters that we're going to look at. Very fascinating stuff. Um, that, and there's no like clear cut, um, you know, de lines of demarcation, so to speak, uh, about some of these topics. But um, geographers must look at um, these issues because it's part of our social landscape and therefore it affects our physical landscape and even our policy making, our, our governance, and um, also the feeling of solidarity with others or um, singularity, you know, as, as opposed to identifying against others. So um, we will have several more videos this week, but uh, this is just the first general overview and stay tuned for some detailed information about these different topics that I've written on the board right here. Text me with questions. Thank you.